Steroids present a particular challenge for managing blood sugars, especially for patients with underlying diabetes. They cause increased insulin resistance, which can lead to significant hyperglycemia. The effect of steroids on blood sugars usually occurs about four hours after the dose. Thus, if patients are taking steroids with breakfast, as they're often given, they will experience hyperglycemia post-lunch. For patients on prednisone, which is a duration of action of 12 hours, the effect will typically wear off several hours after dinner, so fasting blood sugars are not often affected. For patients on long-acting steroids, such as dexamethasone, the hyperglycemia can last for up to 36 hours. When diabetic patients are started on steroids, they should be advised to check their blood sugars one to two hours after dinner for the first few days. If blood sugars are less than 180 milligrams per deciliter, they can discontinue monitoring. If blood sugars are elevated above 200 milligrams per deciliter, however, they should increase testing to four times daily before meals and at bedtime, and you should consider starting treatment for hyperglycemia if blood sugars are consistently elevated throughout the day. The hyperglycemia associated with steroids is primarily post-meal and due to an increase in insulin resistance. For patients without prior diabetes or those with diabetes treated with lifestyle modification only, this can often be managed with oral medications. Metformin can improve insulin resistance and decrease hepatic glucose output. It carries a low risk of hypoglycemia, so is safe to continue during steroid tapers. DPP-4 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists are also reasonable options to consider as they can decrease post-meal hyperglycemia and are unlikely to cause hypoglycemia. Insulin is the best option for managing steroid-induced hyperglycemia in patients with a previous diagnosis of diabetes. For patients new to insulin, starting a basal bolus insulin regimen can be complicated and difficult. So a simple regimen for managing steroid-induced hyperglycemia is to add a dose of once-daily basal insulin with breakfast. For patients already on insulin, you can simply increase their basal insulin dose. What insulin should you use? Well, Choosing which insulin to use depends on the steroid that the patient is getting. As mentioned earlier, prednisone has a 12-hour duration of action. Thus, for patients getting once-daily prednisone, their hyperglycemia is best controlled with NPH with breakfast. The peak of NPH is approximately four hours, which corresponds to the post-lunch hyperglycemia seen with prednisone. The duration of action also matches the effect of prednisone, which minimizes the risk of overnight hypoglycemia. Patients on longer-acting steroids like dexamethasone or twice-daily prednisone will need more prolonged coverage than what they would get with NPH. They'll require a 24-hour basal insulin like Glargine to cover the effects of the steroids. The dose of insulin can be estimated based on a patient's body weight and the dose of steroids. An initial insulin dose would be 0.1 unit per kilogram per day for every 10 milligrams of prednisone, or equivalent, up to a maximum of 0.4 units per kilogram per day. For example, an 80-kilogram patient is taking... 30 milligrams of prednisone daily for one week. We would calculate his insulin dose as 0.1 unit for every 10 milligrams of prednisone, so 0.3 units times his body weight, 80 kilograms, giving us 24 units of NPH every morning. If he were already on insulin, we would simply add this to his home regimen. It's important to recognize that as steroid doses are tapered, you will need to decrease the insulin dose to minimize the risk of hypoglycemia. A good rule of thumb is to decrease the basal insulin by 0.1 unit per kilogram per day for every 10 milligram decrease in steroid dose. Steroid-induced hyperglycemia can be a significant problem for patients on long-term steroid treatment. Be sure to monitor blood sugars for these patients and intervene to treat their hyperglycemia if needed to prevent complications from high blood sugars. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.